welcome to subramani uh one question which everybody keeps asking constantly on the media is should you pick stocks on your own or should you invest in a mutual fund one argument against uh, picking stocks is it's a full time job and it is very difficult to do so you have very many fund managers who are unable to beat the index so you should not uh, pick up stocks but you should invest in a in, in the index or you should invest in a mutual fund uh, i have another argument uh, against uh, stock picking and that comes from the fact that even if you get the analysis right uh, what would you do when the share actually does well now take a company like gamestop uh, or you take something similarly similar which happened in india you bought a share at uh, 10 rupees or 20 rupees and you thought over the next 3 years or 4 years if it can double and it go from goes from say 20 to 40 you will sell it off right so you bought the share it went to 40 in say 6 months right 20 became 40 in 6 months then what do you do do you have the guts and ability to stay on in the share or you say oh it has met my goal so i will get out because it's uh, against my philosophy of uh, Uh, staying on beyond reaching my goal and therefore i'll say let me give you one example in my life i bought apollo hospitals at 9 rupees because i thought it was a great dividend yield obviously long long back maybe in the 90 previous century and then it went up from 9 rupees to 135 rupees and that i thought was a sensational 15 bagger and i sold because the very purpose of why i was buying was because it was a great dividend yield share and it had reached my target and it was no longer giving me a dividend yield and so i sold off having sold off at 135 i didn't know then it went up to 500 i bought again at 500 sold at 700 bought at 800 sold at 900 i did a lot of transactions and always i made money in that but last time i must have sold at about 1700 and after that i have not entered the share and yesterday i sh- i saw the price very close to 3000 rupees right so the question is uh, yes you will buy some good shares and you will hold on to some but you will not hold on to everything you will hold on to some and for some you will say oh i bought this for this particular reason and therefore since that has been met i should sell off Take something like GameStop. If you had bought it at ten dollars and you thought it should go to twenty dollars, when it went to twenty dollars, did you sell? Or when it went to one hundred and ten dollars, did you sell? Or you started fooling yourself into believing? No, no. I think some value is there. Something which the market is capturing. The market knows something which I do not know. We keep telling ourselves all those lies, saying that look, this share is actually a great share. I have picked it up at ten bucks. or 20 bucks and now it has reached 130 and i think it's a great buy that is a lie that you're telling yourself you got lucky and you bought it for a completely different reason uh, for example like ramdev agarwal talks about aishar and he says i bought aishar for the trucks i made money because it sold motorbikes right so these things happen how do you stop fooling yourself saying that no no i think there is great value in this that is one big worry second there is no harm in picking stocks but when you pick stocks there is one thing which uh, most of us lack and that is rigor in calculating returns right so some share which has gone from 10 to 20 in 3 uh, months obviously it has given you sensational 100% return in 3 uh, month period i'm not uh, extrapolating it to 400% per annum kind of a return but after it reaches 20 it may stagnate or it may not go up at all but the mindset is oh i bought this at 10 it is now 25 it has done extremely well yes it has done extremely well if you take it as a 3 month period but it has not done extremely well if you take it as a 5 year period after it went to 25 what did it do did it pay you dividend did it do all that kind of diligence is lacking which would happen with a mutual fund if i were running a fund then i would have to explain each and every buy and each and every hold 
Now, when you are an individual stock picker like me, I don't have to expo. Oh, I won't owe an explanation to anybody as to why I bought that share and why I am holding. For example, I brought uh, GMR Infra at uh, 69 or uh, sorry at 71, and uh, I thought it was a good buy because somebody told me it was a good buy. But uh, when I came home, I called up my regular broker and I said I bought this share because uh, I was told it's a great blah blah blah. He said, this is absolute nonsense, you will sell it off tomorrow. Now, I had bought uh, 5,000 shares and I sold off 4,000 shares thinking, yeah, let me book my loss of 2 bucks and uh, get out of it. So, I got out of it. But after that, I still held on to 1,000 shares. What if my broker was wrong? What if I was right? And then I completely wiped out. I sold off on the way down at some 52. Uh, and that was still not a bad sell because it came down to 9 rupees, right? So, these things will happen. You will get data which is contrary to what you think and that time how do you react? All that is also important because uh, uh, the you do not know whether the fall is temporary or whether the fall is permanent. You bought a share at 71, it has fallen to 52. Is it a permanent fall or is it a temporary fall? What if it comes back, right? Many shares which I have held, I mean I bought uh, Sun Pharma at say 890 or 880, one of the worst prices that I could have paid. I also saw the price, after I bought, I saw the price at 300 and that is ridiculous that I didn't sell off, right? But I actually went and bought more at 300 in March 2020. And I am still holding on to Sun Pharma because largely I believe I want an exposure to the pharma space and I want an exposure to Sun Pharma. But it is, uh, there is so much of gyrations in that and you do not know whether to draw any conclusions at all from the price in the market. Yes, you are looking at the balance sheet, you are looking at the management, etc, etc. So, these kind of uh, holding on beyond a point, holding on at a particular price which has gone down or gone up dramatically and gone up for a completely different reason. Uh, the uh, iShare did not go up because the trucks were doing well. iShare was doing well because of the motorcycle and therefore the price was going up. Do you then convince yourself, no, no, I think motorcycle will also do well or is are you rationalizing or is it a rational buy? That is one question. Now, let me flip it and say what would have happened if you bought some good shares and you held on to it. One, you avoided the cost of the fund manager that is not bad in itself and if you had met your goals then you can always say Subra I earned money I met my goals and uh, one or two shares which I bought did so good sensationally did so well that my overall return in equity or by direct holding is about 15 percent which is not very far away from what would have happened if I had invested in an index in 1979 and held on till today and uh, but of course I got the dividend so along with the dividend my returns are more than 15 16 percent so that's not too bad so that can also be an argument so when you are uh, trying to invest on your own keep two three things in mind one make rules and regulations very strictly and follow them for example I have a a rule which says 10 percent downside on a trading stock and I'll sell and 25 percent downside on a investment stock and I'll sell. I just have got to sell. I also have a rule which says uh, after six months after buying and after three months or after six months if the price has not moved for whatever reasons I will sell because obviously something is wrong with my theory nothing is wrong with the market right. And there might be other opportunities or I may have missed something which uh, the market knows which I don't know, right? So, some of those things. For example, I sold uh, Mind Tree and bought uh, Happiest, uh, Happiest Mindset simply because I felt that it is better to have a company run by professionals rather than be part of a big uh, boring uh, group. Uh, well, I was, uh, I, have, I benefited because Happiest is done better than Mind Tree. But uh, also I bought uh, shares of Fortis Hospital and uh, Fortis has of course done well in the last one year but uh, my Aisha, my Apollo Hospital has done much better. Apollo Hospital has gone up 150 percent and uh, Fortis has gone up 75 percent not cribbing about 75 but the market leader did better than the market laggard.
right so all these things will happen all these things will keep bombarding i need a lot of time also to sit and think i need time to sit and think and talk i need time to sit and think and read because i find that both uh, graham and uh, buffett have made money from companies uh, i will be doing a separate uh, video on uh, graham and buffett making money on a company called geico g e i c o and that would not have fitted into their rules of uh, value investing or uh, how buffett has made money in apple which does not really fit into his value investing right but he has made money and uh, overall it has created wealth for him berkshire hathaway itself uh, has a portfolio which looks very different from what typically buffett says should be in his portfolio and uh, there are a lot of factors so i'll do a separate video about that thank you